Hi, I'm Tom Miggott from Tom Miggott Photography. Over the last three episodes, we talked about how we can manage the noise in our photograph. We noticed that there are two types of noise, one resulting from high ISO value and one resulting from long exposures. We also learned about how to deal with that high ISO type of noise using Adobe Lightroom 5. And if you haven't watched that video, I invite you to click on this link. Then we notice that there is a functionality built in in most modern DSLR that is meant to address that same high ISO noise. And if you haven't watched that video, I invite you to click on this second link. Finally, we talked about the second type of noise, the one resulting from long exposures. And we notice that there is also a functionality built in in most modern DSLR that is meant to address it. And if you haven't watched that video, I invite you to click on the third link. What I said in the last video about the long exposure noise was that this was the way the camera was doing it, but we could also do it manually using tools like Photoshop or maybe GIMP. And this is what we're going to cover today. It's very, very quick. You're going to see it's very, very simple. So to do this experiment, what I did was exactly what I did the last time. I took two exposures and they have to be obviously of the same exposure settings in the same location using the same camera. The camera I'm using is the Canon um, 60D. It's a crop sensor camera and therefore it tends to um, generate hot pixels more uh, easily than if I was using the 5D Mark III, for example, being a full frame camera it is. So exposure wise, what do we have? Well, it's a manual exposure, 30 second, 22 aperture, and um, ISO speed of 100. I chose 100 again just to show you that you don't need to have high ISO value to get hot pixels and um, this type of um, noise. So the first exposure is um, this one and as you can see we have some uh, few hot pixels and the one that is probably the easiest one to spot is the one on the E right here of Courier and if I actually zoom in you're gonna see it much better but there are quite a lot all over the picture. So you see, in fact, we even have a purple one right here, the white and the red. Now, what I did afterwards is I took a second shot, but I actually placed the lens cap on, uh, on the lens to get a dark frame. And you'll notice, as I mentioned the last time, that the hot pixels will remain exactly in the same location, unlike when we deal with random noise, which is the noise resulting from high ISO, and as the name implies it, is quite random. So I'm clicking on this dark frame and you see it's exactly in the same location. Select the first picture again and you'll see it's exactly in the same location. So what I did afterwards was converting those two images from RAW to TIFF file and copy them onto my desktop and then I'm going to open them in Photoshop. The reason I didn't want to use the RAW file in Photoshop or start from Lightroom instead of DPP is as we saw in the last episode, Camera Raw, which is the um, raw interpreter, the raw engine behind Lightroom and Photoshop, has a tendency to deal with hot pixels when interpreting the raw file. So I really wanted to um, show you to illustrate really the, the treat of, um, of uh, hot pixels using Photoshop and not Camera Raw per se. So converting those into TIFF and then going to Photoshop. So here are my TIFF files and I'm just moving them in Photoshop. The noise is still here. If I zoom in, you, you can see the noise on the E's right here and we still have it on the rest of the image. Oop. Zooming out. Then we have the dark picture and also we still have the spot, the, the hot pixel here, hot pixel there, over here in the corner. So what we're gonna do now is very simple, select everything. So select all, so Control A or Command a, if you're on the Mac, and you're going to copy this image, so Control c or Command c if you're on the Mac. And now we're going back to the first image and we're going to do Control v or Command v on the Mac to copy this uh, dark frame onto this image and it's going to create a layer that is going to sit right on top. So I'm doing this and you have it right away. So just so we actually see the um, the, the pixels uh, better. I'm just going to add uh, more brightness. So I'm basically going to increase the brightness. This is not going to increase the dark, but just the bright spots, meaning the hot pixels. And we have it here. And this is where the dark frame subtraction comes. And you'll see it's extremely easy. You select your dark frame, 
you see here it's what we call the blending modes. By default it's set to normal. And if you scroll down you will see sub subtract. And if you select subtract, there you go. What would just happen is a dark frame subtraction. And what do we get out of it? Well, let me zoom in. Look at the E. This is exactly where the hot pixel was. It disappeared. If I deselect this layer, this dark frame, if I deselect it, you see, the hot pixel is here. But by adding this dark frame, which contains exactly the same hot pixels as my real frame, the, the real picture, and I apply a blending mode called subtraction, I in fact do a dark frame subtraction, and therefore it deals with the hot pixels in your photograph. And if we scroll down, well, there's dust. This is a picture of a newspaper, so it's dust. So do not mistake dust and hot pixels. But you see now, look, they disappear. They appear, they disappear. They appear, they disappear. So this is it. This is all. This is all there is to know about dark frame subtraction. So it's up to you. Um, I personally would rather do this than using um, the camera. At the end, are you going to save time? Not really. You're not going to save time by doing this method because you end, you end up taking a second frame sharing exactly the same exposure setting. Meaning if your first a picture you were doing star trail for example in one go in one frame and you capture a five minute exposure then the second frame that you need to take that dark frame is going to have to be five minutes as well but bear in mind if you didn't do it manually and you wanted to use this technique to deal with these um, hard pixels and you let the camera do the trick the camera would still take a five minute exposure so in fact, using this Photoshop method is somewhat longer in the in a broader sense since afterwards when you go back home in front of your computer, you need to go in Photoshop and apply this dark frame subtraction instead of letting your camera um, doing it. However, as I said in the last episode, I do believe that my computer and more specifically the tools that I use such as Photoshop will do a much better job at doing the dark frame subtraction than the camera um, would. So that's why I wanted to share this with you. So let me know in the comments if you if you knew about this method, if you think you're going to use it and which one you would go for. Would you go for the camera option or would you go for this uh, Photoshop option of dark frame subtraction? And bear in mind, Photoshop is not the only tool where you can actually do this. So you don't need to think, oh, it's going to cost me money to actually do this. No, there are free tools out there and I'm going to post them in my blog article. So as usual, you find in the description, there's a link to my blog if you didn't discover this video through my website. And you can go there and I will uh, give a few link. And I suspect GIMP could also uh, do it and GIMP is free as well. So until next time this is Tom Miggott saying if you like it capture it and take care of those hot pixels. Ciao.